All right. Welcome back, folks. This is now part five of the conjugate series. So far, we've looked at why we would pick conjugate. We've looked at maximum effort, repetition effort, dynamic effort. Today, we're going to wrap up with how to put all this together into a given week. So firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments, pop them down below. And if you'd like to work with me to actually put all this into action, if you still require help after this entire five-part series, then there's a link in the description. Go ahead and do that. And let's work together and make some gains. So going straight into this. Now, your standard template is a four-day-a-week thing. At least that's where it starts. So you can start with four-day-a-week and progress that with additional sessions for weak points if you want. But this is usually where it starts. And the general outline is you're going to have a maximum effort lower day, a dynamic lower day, then a maximum effort bench day, and a maximum effort, a dynamic effort bench day. And in terms of how the day looks, the first exercise is normally the maximum effort or the dynamic effort of the day. Okay, so it could be a bench variation, a squat deadlift variation, or the actual lifts done for speed work. So that's the first thing you typically start with after you've done your warm up. Now, exercises two and three, they tend to be the main assistance. So when I'm programming this in, it usually starts with a lift which is directly going to benefit the lift you've just done. So, for example, on a ME lower day, if you've just done a squat variation, your exercise number two is probably going to be some sort of deadlift variation or good morning variation done for sets and reps of your choice, as we discussed. Then exercise three is something similar, just to back up that movement pattern. A very typical setup for me is if I did a squat as a ME uh, movement, I would back it up with some sort of um, semi straight leg uh, deadlift and then possibly also some kind of good morning. So you back up the, the uh, posterior chain and movement pattern. If it's a bench press, it could be something like an overhead press or a different pressing variation. Now, exercises four and five, they tend to be the uh, ex exercises which target the surrounding areas. So on a lower body day, it might be something to do with abs. It might be something to do with quads even, if that's a weakness for you. On upper body day, it's probably likely going to be some kind of upper back exercise or tricep exercise. And then if you, depending on your work capacity, if you get to exercises six plus, then there'll be a range of accessories, which could be, again, more ab work, high volume, lower back work. It could be on upper body day, bicep work, tricep work, shoulder work, stuff like that. So that's the standard template, but it usually follows that order. We have the main lift of the day, the main assistance of the day, then various exercises which just fill out the rest of the routine and a lot of the smaller ones at the end which you can do for supersets or higher repetitions stuff like that so hopefully that, that makes sense looking at the what i wanted to do is i wanted to include a three-day template because i use all of these with different clients i use four days three days and two days so with a three-day template you the major differences you'll morph into an full body routine so day one would be maximum effort on everything. So you would squat and deadlift and bench press maximum effort. And if you were doing um, sort of pull-ups and chin-ups as a max effort, you'd do that as well on that day. And then day two would be just repetition effort and day three would be dynamic effort. So it ends up being somewhat of a heavy light medium system, which you guys know I'm a fan of, if you remember my wizard book, but this becomes the, the heavy day is very much like a max effort day. So you rotate variations. The repetition effort day is exclusively just bodybuilder style work, and it looks a little bit like a typical light day. And then the medium day is somewhat in between. You are doing the power lifts or whatever your lifts of focus are, but you're doing them for speed and high repetition work. So it has a natural heavy light medium flow. Now, in terms of how these days look, so you'll start off with, um, usually the bench press is a good one to start with. Do that for ME or DE, whatever day it is, or RE, and then you add in an assistance exercise. So that's two exercises to, to start off. Some kind of bench variation and a close variation on top of that, or dynamic effort and a close variation on top of that. Or if it's just a light day, you might just do two pressing variations. That works. Next exercise, it will be um, squat and deadlift, maximum effort, or dynamic effort, or just repetition effort, plus an assistance. And then third one would be something for the upper back. So you've got that 
push pull legs kind of rotation so over the course of those six first additional exercises you have you cover the entire body then after that you might add in one to four exercises for balance so yes you might be doing up to 10 exercises per day which is quite a high workload but then if you are condensing down to three days a week it's sort of a sacrifice you have to make that you can trim this down somewhat but again it's it's a case of like you if you are only devoting two or three days a week to the gym your work capacity should be relatively high it's doable and you can build into it but it's you know you might start with a basic six exercises which cover everything and that's fine gets you everything particularly your re day could add some variation but um it, it you know it's, it, it ends up being more work by necessity than a four day um week and then the final variation is something about doing it two days a week and two days a week essentially you have what is a maximum effort day and you have a dynamic effort day so your repetition effort day in the middle gets completely obliterated and it gets spread out into the me and the r and the d by necessity again your volume is going to be lower overall but on each day your volume should be quite high so me day should look a little bit like this it should be your bench press max effort or dynamic effort plus an assistance exercise then your squat or deadlift lift for max effort and deadlift and dynamic effort plus an assistance and then if you are going to be maxing on upper back upper back there as well as well as one to four exercises additional for balance for like shoulders and um, triceps and biceps and stuff like that but two day a week means you've really got to prioritize your compound movements and you've got to get enough of a spread of exercises that you're able to hit everything without leaving any stone and turn and remember we are rotating exercises week to week so it's not like if you don't overhead press one week you can't overhead press the next week or etc etc so just make sure over the course of a given couple of weeks you're at least hitting everything that you need to hit even on such an abbreviated schedule like this and the second thing is work capacity is real like if you're training two days a week you really better be timing your rest periods um reducing them when you can and when it's appropriate maybe not for me work but certainly for everything else and making sure you're getting as much volume in as you can and building that over time you don't want to be you don't want to be training two days a week and being lazy about it definitely not so two days a week get the build the work capacity and get the work in okay now here are some sort of common questions about essentially the whole series so the first question is why ever complicate things fast so i've just delivered to you a five-part series of something which i do with my clients which gets my clients results now the first question if you're looking at this if you're not subscribed to me by the way subscribe but you might be thinking why is this guy complicating training just go in squat deadlift go home eat your gallon of milk whatever and be happy right so my first sort of response to that is like if you don't need this level of complexity then feel free to ignore it you don't have to apply any of this but typically the guys who are on the guys and girls who are on youtube looking for information are stalled out so typically they need this information i mean i don't discuss any of this kind of stuff with anybody at the gym that i go to or really anybody in my in my personal life unless they ask me for it so if you don't need to complicate it if you don't need this level of complexity you crack on ignore everything i've said here all i know is that at a certain point my clients and years ago myself i needed specialized training i needed to know this kind of stuff otherwise i would have stalled and for me that point was about 140 kilo squat about a 90 kilo bench and about 190 kilo deadlift that was the point where i just completely stalled out and I kept hitting my head against the wall and I just couldn't progress any further. And I would have stayed stuck there because trust me, I gave it a good shot. I gave linear progression a good shot, but it didn't work. I needed more complexity. So to answer that question for people who say, why ever complicate things? Because I stalled out 19 years ago and I needed to. If I didn't, I would have stagnated. And the next sort of retort is just keep it simple. This is usually said by two groups of people. The first are your genetic outliers who can pretty much do anything and make progress. So there are guys that I've known over the years in gyms, you know, sporadically friends, acquaintances, guys in the gym who I've known who can pretty much do anything and make progress. Usually it's a company's drugs as well. There was a guy, there was a guy I knew a few years ago and his training routine would be like this. He would train, he would train, he would max out on the squat bench and deadlift on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Of week one obviously he had a two-week rotation <laughs> it's just hilariously bad right but he would max out on the squat bench and deadlift monday tuesday and wednesday okay 
And then for the rest of the week one and for the rest of week two, he would do light bodybuilding work in a split. And when I when I asked him about this, he said, yeah, it just keeps me strong. <laughs> Can you imagine? And he looked good. Can you imagine being so genetically blessed that whatever stupid stuff you do in the gym, <laughs> you still end up with a physique? Like, it just it blew my mind. And obviously, you know, he was genetically gifted, but he also he was on a bunch of drugs as well. So this special routine, is, I don't think he's going to catch on. But anyway, that's the first people who say, keep it simple. Um, second is people with very low muscle and strength expectations. You know, I, I used to be sort of somewhat, uh, I used to somewhat affiliated with a, a crowd of, of uh, online like years ago, two decades ago, who, who had very, very low expectations in terms of muscle and strength. And they all told me when I hit that 90 kilo bench press plateau that, you know, that's it, you're done, your genetics, you you know, are here, just fine. And they said, look, and they all believed in linear progression. But that's the thing, like, they would think a 90 kilo bench is, is decent, you know, I didn't, like, I had it in my head, I was going to bench three plates aside at least. And so people who say, just keep it simple, a lot of them, they're just trying to hold you back. Like, they, they have really piss poor expectations of muscle and strength themselves. So if they see anybody trying to better and learn more and all that kind of stuff, they just tell them that don't bother. It's the equivalent of the of the stupid kid at school who just who takes the mick out of you for um, revising for a test. Why revise? I'm not going to get anything out of it anyway. And you just think, well, because I want to do better. I want to learn. You go, oh, what's the point? It's the equivalent of that. Those people are the equivalent of the dumb kid in class who never revises for tests and then rags on everyone else for revising. But if you're on here and you're on YouTube and you're trying to do better and you're better yourself, education is the key. So that's kind of my response to that. And finally, why conjugate? I don't just use conjugate. I use I use all three major forms of periodization with my clients, either linear, undulating, or conjugate. It really depends on the situation and on personal preference. So I use all three. And I use, com as I said in the first video, I use combinations of that, strands of that. So most programs will have some level of linearity to them because if they didn't, you wouldn't progress, right? So, uh, but then I also use varying levels of undulating and conjugate. But there is no better or worse. A lot of it boils down to where that person is in their training career and what their personal preference is. All right, folks, that is a wrap. This is a five-part series, and it is rammed with information. Now, if you still feel you need um, individual help after this, then I think it would be the best thing would be to hire me. There's a three-month commitment to my coaching. Hire me for three few months. Let's do some coaching. You can learn a lot um, and improve your lifts. And take from that what you will. So there's a link in the description. Get on it and uh, let's get some let's get some coaching done. You know, let's rather than waste time and months trying to figure this stuff out or just plateauing. There's trust me, guys. When you're at my age, there's there's nothing worse than wasted time. Time is far more precious than money. So get with the coaching. Let's make some progress and let's take it from there. All right, folks, I am going to call it there. Again, would very much appreciate uh, your thoughts on the five-part series, um, shares, all that kind of stuff. If you're not subscribed and you've got to this end of this five-part series, do hit the subscribe button. Um, share it around. Tell your friends about the channel and if you think it's something useful. I think this five-part series was um, very informative. And um, I hope you do too. All right, folks, take care.